It's the middle of February, things are really starting to happen in the garden. So now is a perfect time for a garden tour and to show you what I'm doing in my garden right now. So come on, come and enjoy my garden in February. Hey everyone, how's it going? And welcome back. And welcome back to my garden in February. I really want to do a more regular garden tour video. In fact, I'd really love to do a monthly garden tour video. But truthfully, I find it kind of difficult to talk about my garden, particularly the same areas of my garden month after month, especially if I feel like not an awful lot has changed, even though plenty of work's happening and most of it is maintenance. So what I thought is I'm gonna do a mashup that every month I'm gonna do a video that's going to be a combination of part garden tour, so you can see what's happening, what the garden looks like, but also what I'm doing in the garden at the moment, things that I'm growing, things that I'm planting out. That's what all these are for. We'll come back to that in a minute, but we're in the front garden and you can see it's pretty bare still. Most of these trees aren't gonna get their leaves for another couple of months but it's still just a really nice space. I've got little pots of snowdrops, colchicums, which although they're in leaf at the moment, they're not gonna come into flower until the autumn. And just the bare stems of the trees, particularly the cornice, which looks beautiful with those red bare stems. Lots of perennials that now need cut back, which I've left through the winter for wildlife and to encourage biodiversity. And really all of this front garden just sits. I love it. Not so much for a garden tour. So let's keep moving and I'll show you what's happening in the back garden. Round to the back garden and I'm going to dump the wheelbarrow there for a minute so that I can show you exactly what's happening here. A little bit like the front garden, the vast majority of the back garden here is much more permanent low maintenance planting. Trees and grass. And that means that at this time of year, there isn't that much to do, but at the same time, it's really beautiful. So under the massive cedar tree, we've got snowdrops and daffodils that are coming up. And behind that, the pond, which is just sitting really nicely at the moment. I am not going to show you a close up of it because it really badly needs weeded. Then off to one side, we've got the fruit trees, mainly cooking apple trees. Confession though, they are in desperate need of a proper winter prune. And I haven't done a single bit of winter pruning and they are just really getting more than a bit overgrown. But then underneath, and this is what's really great about this time of year in this part of the garden, is that underneath all of the trees, and I'm gonna run all the way over to show you this, underneath all of the apple trees, there's beautiful spring blossom. At the moment, it's all snowdrops just singing out those little white flowers. But come back next month and I'm gonna show you what a riot of color this is. There are loads of daffodils, white ones, ones with orange centers, plain yellow ones, as well as the remnants of the snowdrops and then more spring planting. This part of the garden really does come alive. But that's pretty much it from here. In the background, I don't know how well you can see it's a little bit messy. Where I took the hedge down a couple of years ago, that's going to be this spring's project. But where the real work is happening is over in what's going to be the guild garden and the greenhouse. So come on, let's have a look. I promised you that this is where everything was happening. And I don't know how easy it is for you to see that, but it really is. Welcome to what was the veg garden and what is now pretty firmly the guild garden. Over the last few weeks, in behind the scenes, I've been getting all of my dwarf fruit trees planted and you can see all the way along each side of the garden, every bed has one small dwarf fruit tree. I've got plums, cherries, pears, apples, pears, cherries, and gauges at the back. It has been 
a lot of work to get all of these in, staked, and ready to go. But now that they're in, they add a really nice structure to the garden. As well as that, at this time of year, a lot of the work that needs done here, especially when you've got beds like this, is keeping them weeded and starting to plant things in. And that's what's in the wheelbarrow. A lot of the planting that I'm going to be putting into the guild garden, as well as having annuals for flowers, when it comes to bringing in flowers, I want to really start to rely a little bit more heavily on perennials. And that's because they're going to give me that repeat flowering year after year. They're going to be nice and hardy and they're going to save me a huge amount of time because once they're planted, I'm hoping that they're going to look after themselves year after year with only really minimal maintenance. And that's really going to suit me. But what I want to show you really closely right now is what's on my table, this little table of interest. I've been looking forward to showing you this for a while. At the moment, this is my table of spring interest. I adore spring bulbs of all kinds, and I think they look beautiful when the bulbs are flowering in beds. They do look stunning. They certainly do out underneath the apple trees. But what I really like as well is planting tiny pots of spring bulbs and putting them on a table where you can appreciate them. And I want to show you some of the lovely things that I've got. For instance, these are just starting. These are tiny little species tulips, and I have several different types. One which is Cerulea oculata alba, can be brilliant. This one is tete a tete, and it's just poking through. Another few weeks, and it's going to be in flower. I have pots and pots of irises that unfortunately are doing very little at the moment, and that's because I planted them so late. They're still going to flower, they're just going to take another couple of weeks. But, just to promise how lovely they're going to be, I have one flower of Iris Fabiola. This gorgeous, intense, real like violet purple with white streaks and a yellow centre. It's just so charming. I love it. What else have I got? So, oh, I have got a nice little pot of snowdrops because just like anything else, it is lovely to be able to look up at them from underneath and appreciate the flowers. I've got tiny little crocuses that are just coming into flower. These are the palest of pale purple with yellow flushing at the bottom. They're lovely. I'd really encourage you to do something like this yourself. Gather together pots of plants that you can appreciate up close. It really is a lovely display. And it just means that you can enjoy them so much more. And it doesn't have to be spring bulbs. It can be anything you like. But there's not just pots here of bulbs. There's pots everywhere. I've got about a dozen really big pots of tulips dotted around the centre of the garden here. And I've got pots planted either side of the greenhouse. I'm hoping for a really spectacular display of particularly tulips later on in the spring. I think it's going to look brilliant. We'll have a look at those in a couple of months time, but I bet you want to see what's happening inside the greenhouse. So come, I'm going to show you. Okay, greenhouse time. And what's nice is I think this is the first time that I've properly shown you the greenhouse since I got it built last summer. It sits at the end of the guild garden and this is going to be the nerve centre of all of the growing. And as you can see, growing I have been doing. Right at the start of the year, I got some broad bean plants going. They're doing really well and these are soon to be planted out. But my plan is that they're not going to get planted out outside into the garden. They're going to get planted down into the polytunnel because I have an idea that I'm going to get some, well, hopefully get some really nice early harvests of broad beans. But I also don't want to completely run out of broad beans too early. So I have done a second sowing, a successional sowing of beans. And you can see that even ones that have been sown only a couple of weeks ago come up really, really quickly. The germination rates of broad beans are normally pretty high. They're going to get planted out once they're just a little bit bigger so that I have a second crop of those. As well as that, I wanted to get some really early peas going. 
And what I like doing is starting them in modules. Granted, you can start them in root trainers if you have them, but I find these perfectly successful as well. I've got two types of early P going. One is called Douce Provence, and the other is Sienna. All of these are going to be going outside very shortly. They're nice hardy peas. As well as that, I've got lots of onion sets that have been bringing on. They're looking great, but look at the roots underneath them. <laughs> look at those roots. These are so long overdue getting planted out, so they're going to have to go out soon as well. And then as well as that, I've got shallots. I've also got Babington leeks started. Now, what's great about Babington leeks is that they're perennial. These are what they look like when they're a more adult plant, but you can also grow them from bulbils, which I have done over here. Lots of tiny little plants. Here they are. So I'm hoping for plenty. And then as well as that, I like to get things started fairly early because hardy plants, you can get going now if they've got just a little bit of protection. Granted, not any heat, just a little bit of protection. So in here, I have all kinds of brassicas and some hardy annuals like calendula, cornflower, and also some more salad leaves. All of these are going to get going. Plus... Oh, right. Over the winter... I've been getting all of these going in the greenhouse as well, and I've just brought them out. These are all of my alliums. These are going to get planted out into the guild garden because they have beautiful flowers, but they're also going to be a great repellent plant. Just fantastic. These are Allium spherocephalon, tiny little egg-shaped purple flowers. They're one of the latest flowering alliums, and they're both kind of green and then maroon. Beautiful. I have got... This is only one box of them. I have about three or four boxes of these. <laughs> I went a bit overboard, but I think they're going to look great. So now you can see how everything is starting to take shape. Things are happening in the greenhouse. Things are happening here in the garden as well. And there is so much more still to happen. Even just looking at the central original fruit tree guild beds, everything's bursting back to life. The fennel, the comfrey, the lupins, the achilles, everything is popping up. And you really can feel spring in the air. I don't know if you get this, but I always notice, both in spring and in autumn, there's one day when you step outside and you just suddenly feel like something's different. That's what I've had the last couple of days. It feels like spring is starting. Granted, we're going to get plenty of other horrible wintry days before spring really kicks in. But you can just feel that slight change. And I'm so looking forward to getting stuck in. So hopefully you've enjoyed seeing a little bit around the whole garden here. But particularly what I've been growing, working on and developing over the last few weeks. I'm going to keep these going. Most of all, please do leave a comment and let me know what you think. And until next time. See you later.